Southern and Northern Nigeria, a British protectorate at the time, were combined to form what is now known as Nigeria in the year 1940. This video aims to give you a glimpse into the real-life events that took place in 1914, also known as the Amalgamation of Nigeria. Lord Frederick Dutry Lugard was a British soldier of fortune who served in Egypt, Hong Kong, Nigeria, and other countries as a mercenary and colonial administrator. The Royal Niger Company sent Lugard to Bogu in 1894, where he negotiated treaties with the kings and chiefs that acknowledged the company's sovereignty while lessening the influence of other colonial powers. For the British West Charterland Company, Lugard oversaw an expedition to Lake Ngomi in present-day Botswana from 1896 to 1897. In order to defend British interest in the hinterland of the Lagos colony and Nigeria against French aggression, the British government ordered him to be sent to West Africa after recalling him from Ngomi. Lugard established the West African Frontier Force in August 1897 and oversaw it until the end of December 1899, when the conflicts with France were resolved. Lugard was named the Protectorate of Northern Nigeria's High Commissioner after giving up control of the West African Frontier Force. He was present when the proclamation establishing the Protectorate on January 1, 1900, was read at Mount Party in Lokoja. The Sultan of Sokoto and numerous other princes' refusal to uphold their treaty obligations at the time made Lugard's task of organizing this vast territory more challenging. At the time, the area of northern Nigeria that was effectively under control was small. In 1903, a successful campaign against the Amir of Kano and the Sultan of Sokoto allowed the British to take control of the entire protectorate. By the time Lugard resigned as commissioner in 1906, British residents were in charge of overseeing the administration of the entire region that would eventually become modern-day Nigeria. During his six-year tenure as High Commissioner, Lugard was focused on creating a workable territorial entity under real British political control out of the commercial sphere of influence he inherited from the Royal Niger Company. His goal was to subdue the entire region and force its native leaders, particularly the Fulani Amirs of the Sokoto Caliphate, to recognize the British protectorate. When diplomatic efforts failed, Lugard's campaign used armed force to gradually crush local resistance. Bono surrendered peacefully, and in 1903 Lugard's WAF launched attacks on Kano and Sokoto. Clear-cut military victories, in Lugard's opinion, were required because their surrenders weakened resistance elsewhere. Lugard made his way back to Nigeria in 1912 to serve as the ruler of the two protectorates. His mission was to combine the two colonies into one. Although the amalgamation was contentious in Lagos, where it was opposed by a significant portion of the political class and the media, the general public did not express strong feelings about it because they were not aware of the implications. Lugard paid little attention to popular opinion and didn't think locals needed to come to an agreement on such a serious political issue with such significant ramifications for the two colonies. He believed that the typical African is a happy, thriftless, excitable person, lacking in self-control, discipline and foresight, naturally courageous, courteous and polite, full of personal vanity, with little of veracity. In brief, the virtues and defects of this race type are those of attractive children. Lugard permitted slavery in traditional native elite families in northern Nigeria. He detested the intelligent, cultured Africans who lived along the coast. Lugard presided over the nation while spending half the year in England, where he could advance his career and be removed from the conditions in Africa, where subordinates were forced to put off making many decisions until he returned. Lugard was sent to organize the West African Frontier Force, which he used to successfully defend not only the western but the northern frontiers of British Nigeria from French encroachment. This was after the British government decided to raise a local militia to protect the western frontier of the Royal Niger Company's territory against French advance from Dahomey. However, the successful union of the North and South in 1914 was Lugard's greatest contribution to the creation of modern Nigeria. The two parts continued to exist as two separate nations with separate governments even after the amalgamation. Although his primary goal in doing this was to give the North access to the wealth and seaport infrastructure of the South, 
he had actually shaped the political unity of the giant of Africa. Nigeria's amalgamation helped the country develop the infrastructure required for a modern state, including common telegraphs, railways, customs and excise, a supreme court, a standard time zone, a common currency, and a common civil service. More significantly, by founding the Nigerian Council in 1914, he laid the groundwork for ongoing legislative assemblies in Nigeria. The governor, the chief secretary, and a few other nominated members met to discuss government policies and offer their opinions. Unfortunately, it legislated only for the South. Because it established the framework for the Legislative Council of later years, it might be referred to as a mock parliament. Despite his contributions, his policy of severing ties between the North and the South, a policy that his successors continued, has contributed to Nigeria's ongoing division. As an illustration, Consider how the North was barred from the Legislative Council until 1947. Therefore, it is possible to say that Lugard planted the seed of the separatist tendency that continue to undermine Nigeria's unity today. Inadequate Northerners' access to social services and education was also partially Lugard's fault. And for this reason, the South outperforms the North in terms of educational advancement. In his book, The Dual Mandate, he argued that managing Africa could simultaneously advance its people's welfare and develop the region's resources for the benefit of humanity. He defended British colonial policies, especially the indirect government he established in Nigeria. Lugard outlined the justifications and strategies for colonizing Africa in his book. His justifications for establishing colonial rule included promoting Christianity and putting an end to the barbaric African practices of human sacrifice. Additionally, he saw state-sponsored colonization as a means of defending missionaries, native chiefs, and the local populace against outside forces as well. Before Germany, Portugal, or France claimed the land and its resources for themselves, Lugard believed it was crucial for Britain to seize control of unclaimed areas. He understood that there were enormous profits to be made from taxing native populations and from exporting resources like rubber. The Industrial Revolution in resource scarce Britain would also be fueled by these resources and the cheap native labor, slavery was abolished by Britain in 1833, as well as funding for public works initiatives. Finally, Lugard argued that colonization had become fashionable and that Britain would need to maintain colonies in order to maintain its status as a superpower and avoid looking vulnerable. In conclusion, Lugat's attitude toward Nigeria suggested that he did not envision Nigeria having its own government. He envisioned unending British colonialism. Kate B. C. Omubiko describes him as one of Britain's arch-imperialists due to his system of indirect rule, hostility towards educated Nigerians in the South, and system of education for the North that aimed to train only the sons of the chiefs and amirs as clerks and interpreters. If you enjoyed watching, please give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, share and subscribe. See you in our next video.